Uh, so we welcome along today to Radio Bath, the lovely Jazzy Phoenix. Good morning or afternoon, Jazzy, whenever people are listening to this. How... <laughs> good, good morning. How are you? I'm really good. I, I'm very good. So, um, so you're here today because you're going to be talking about the Come What May show that's taking place. Tell us all about it first. Oh, gosh. I mean, Come What May is a, is a movie musical spectacular. We have mostly the music from the Moulin Rouge as Come What May would suggest, but we also have some music and dance numbers from all different movie musicals, all of your favourites. We've got Burlesque. Um, we've got a little bit of A Star Is Born. Lots of really cool movie musicals. Lovely. And what part are you playing? So I'm playing Satine, but also, also female lead vocals. So for the for the parts that aren't Moulin Rouge, I'm not Satine anymore. I'll be doing other other just lead vocals. Fair enough. And how has it been getting together with a cast? Because you've been in EastEnders for a while. And yes, now you're back to musical theatre. So how has that transition been for you? It's been really nice. I I really like moving between disciplines. It like really suits me. I get quite bored quite quickly. Not that I'm bored of EastEnders at all. Uh, it's impossible to be bored there because it runs like so everything's so fast and crazy. Uh, but yeah, it's been really nice to be back on stage and doing live. I mean, singing and dancing at the same time, which I do a lot of in this musical, is a real challenge. And it's been really nice to get those muscles moving again. Yeah. So, I mean, I can sing very averagely and <laughs> I dance for a living. That's what my normal job is. I have to say the combination of trying to do singing and dancing together at the same time, I think I would be horrific at both of them. So how do you actually cope with the breathing side of it then? It's a real, uh, yeah, it's a challenge and it's a bit of a fine art. I think for me, what, what I, because this is definitely one of the most intense uh, performances I've ever done as far as dancing and singing at the same time usually a lot of musical theater when you're singing you're not necessarily dancing you're moving but not dancing yeah uh, yeah but in this we're doing full choreography yeah. so I think um for me it's it's about stabilization like not necessarily just about how you breathe but when you breathe and also then how you hold yourself while you move so that your voice doesn't also move it's a bit of a it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. It is. Um, how have rehearsals been going then? So tour starts, I think, on the 20th of September, doesn't it? You're coming to Bath on the 2nd of October. Yes, we are. The wonderful Bath Forum. Um, I will be there, just to let you know. Oh, wonderful. Well, then I'll, I'll see you then. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you then. I'll come and say hello. Um, oh, fabulous. But, uh, but, yeah, so how have you actually found rehearsals then? Amazing, really intense. Uh, but the cast is so lovely and all of the all of the creatives are really lovely so it's been a it's the rehearsal room is a really nice environment I think when it when it is such a nice environment and everybody is so so talented like the cast are, are insane um it creates an environment that you can work really hard in without feeling like <gasps> like you're suffering you know um so it's been intense of course it's intense I mean we're putting a we're putting on this whole musical and you know whatever it is two and a half weeks so it's been a very full-on process it is a short um, turnaround isn't it and no doubt yeah. you know, i know when i've been in um, studios and practicing for group rehearsals and stuff it can get quite quite tense at times you're desperate to get mm -hmm. things right and then everyone gets very very tired at the same time so it's quite athletic so how have you found that side of it um to be honest i haven't really found that with this cast in particular we've been everybody's so supportive of each other i think we're very much leaning on each other for support um but everyone's so talented. The dancers have absolutely blown my mind. I mean, I'm, I've, you know, am kind of a dancer, but they, I mean, they, the, the speed in which they pick things up and the manner in which they, they can do that is crazy to me. It blows my mind. Obviously, AJ and Curtis are ballroom dancers. That's their, mm -hmm. their main background. So what's your background in dancing? Because like? that's the bit I'm most interested in, if I'm honest. Yeah, so I was a ballerina. Um, I did ballet all my life from kind of age about three until yeah. I was about, mm, I stopped doing ballet properly when I was about 17 or 18. Did you do the um, standard ballet modern and tap then? Was that the standard? Yeah, thing? yes, I did. I did, although I didn't tap. Uh, tap was not really for me. So I mostly did ballet, ballet, jazz and contemporary. Um, I never did ballroom or Latin. I would have loved to. I used to go to salsa nights with my friends in salsa, but I, I never did anything serious. So I'm actually learning a little bit from AJ and Curtis, which has been really nice. Lovely. And how have you found the transition then between musical theatre? Because I've seen a lot of musical theatre 
and quite often dancers that have learned solo are fantastic solo dancers mm -hmm. and when they have to do partner dancing not quite so much mm -hmm. how have you found that transition and have you got much partner dancing in this yes so i have a little bit but there's a lot in the show um i think for me having a good male lead is really helpful or a good lead like having aj and curtis who are so experienced makes my job really really easy whenever i do dance with them because i don't have to do much their guidance is is really great um and i think the same for the other dancers really but also i think it's one of those things when you are, are at a certain level in one discipline it does get easier to transfer over into others once you can use your body well it's kind of easier to to put that into different different disciplines yeah very much so and a lot of the skills are transferable aren't they yeah exactly and then i suppose one of the other questions i've got so back in 2018 i had the pleasure of being at the tower ballroom in blackpool mm -hmm. and we did our showcase that we did which included part of moulin rouge and we used the tango section from it and we had to kind of get into character to be kind of tango side of it. so how do you feel about getting into the different you know partly your sateen and partly your somebody else mm -hmm. Um, oh, I love it. I mean, character is, is my thing. That's, that's what feeds, that's my soul food is acting. Acting is what I love to do. So character-based work is, is the thrill of it all. And I think you have to, like, I think Jazzy in my real life would, would never be able to get up and do these songs and dances and choreography. You know, I'd feel a bit self-conscious yeah. or I'd feel a bit, I don't know, but, but embodying someone else and channeling somebody else really, really helps. I mean, I always find, I, I remember from the Strictly moments when Kevin from Grimsby, as he was known, wasn't it? Um, and I always talk when I'm, I'm training the other teachers that I do quite regularly in, in our style of dancing. I often say, if I have to go into a Latin moment, I'm not Richard from Portsmouth anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I am, you know, whoever my favourite Strictly dance might be at that moment in time. I often channel Ian Waite. Um, okay. Just kind of just, right, there I am. And I'm, I'm that person because otherwise yeah. I feel quite self-conscious. So how do you feel about doing these types of interviews and being jazzy then and not in character? Oh, do you know what? I've gotten, I've gotten more used to it, uh, but I, I struggle. I, I struggled. I used to struggle a lot more. Now I'm feeling a little more comfortable. And I think this tour has been quite good because it's been a bit of a plunge in the deep end. Uh, but I remember like it's been an odd thing for me because obviously – you know, I'm from New Zealand. I moved here to London and, and start to start, well, to continue my career, further my career. Uh, but East End has kind of plunged me into uh, a bit more of a spotlight than I'm used to. Um, and that came with a lot of press and things. Um, and I've always been quite scared of that. I've always been a bit nervous. And um, I don't think it's like it so much anymore, but I've always, you know, you all hear the horror stories about how people get painted in the media and, you know, you say one thing and it gets twisted into another and blah, blah, blah. I've always been a bit of an anxious bunny anyways. I've always been a bit anxious anyway. So, um, yeah, but it massively helps to do the interviews over and over and over again and have lovely people like you kind of help ease me into those things. Well, hopefully we have some idea of what we're talking about. Um, remind everybody, we're going to do a quick fire round to finish very quickly, but remind everybody, yeah. do you know where they can get the tickets from if they mm -hmm. want to get the tickets for the show? Yes, you can go onto the Come What, into, onto the Come what May website. The tickets okay. will be available there. Fabulous. And I say, I hope we can come and see you in Bath. I think that's right. I hope I haven't given you any misinformation with the tickets. I'm pretty sure you go onto the Come What May website. You, I but if I've told a lie, I hold my hands up. I'm sure if you type it into Google, you will find it. <laughs> we'll find it there. Now, I've got the oddest question. I always try and find a question which I think nobody's ever been asked before, because I know when you okay. all of these, you will often get the same questions over and over again. You're like, oh, let's get a bit dull. OK, so mm -hmm. I've, I've tried to search the data banks and thought, right, what question can I ask? And you may have been asked this question before. Please let me know. But what rider do you request when you go to a venue? And please explain what a rider is, if you don't know. Do you I have I don't know what a rider is. Okay, a rider is your, what do you request in your dressing room? Oh. Is it green Skittles and no red ones, for instance? Oh. That type of thing. And people have often have. Oh, that's a really interesting ones. question. There you go. Um, so there's my odd question of the day. Oh, gosh. What do I request in my dressing room? Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really boring. I'd probably like a kettle. Okay. Like just to have like tea and coffee equipment. That's kind of... I'm a simple gal. 
uh, and like fruit and f- like fruit and fruit fruit and but definitely a kettle because also I drink a lot of tea I drink a lot of coffee when I'm performing but I also steam a lot so a, a kettle will do me for just about every area of my life that's so your main ride is a kettle <laughs> yeah fair enough right let's finish off the quick fire round then okay so okay. very quick eight questions quick answers are you ready let's yes go. I'm ready so favorite ice cream oh um cookie dough, cookie dough ben and jerry's right. specifically okay are you tidy or messy uh messy messy love or hate roller coasters i hate hate, hate roller coasters them. i love them uh important one do you hang your toilet roll over the top or behind the back oh over the top if you're hanging it behind the back there's something wrong with you just wrong i'm gonna ask yeah. aj and curtis by the way as well just let you yeah know. please do we'll have a fight about them later please do uh do you eat your chocolate from the fridge or from the cupboard oh it depends on the chocolate in what way so like dark chocolate i would keep in the cupboard but milk chocolate i would keep in the fridge okay very good if you had to do it it's very difficult as somebody that can sing what is your go-to karaoke song oh um all by myself uh, and can you give us a quick rendition <laughs> absolutely not but come have... see the come see the show <laughs> comes in the show beautifully done lovely segue love it. Uh, <laughs> thank you thank you two important questions to come back to, uh, for the mm-hmm. next bit. if you came back in your next life as an animal which one would it be and why i think i would either be a house cat because i love Cats and I feel like they're really independent. I could just do whatever I wanted if I was a house cat. Um, or I'd maybe be, uh, maybe I'd be a shark. A shark? Okay, yeah, what? I might be a shark because I feel like you're not really under much threat as a shark. And I also would quite like to be under the water. Like, I'd like to have a go in the ocean. You know, yeah. I like have a life in the ocean. For, I've been a land creature so far as far as I'm aware. So it'd be, quite, right. it'd be quite good to be in this, under the sea. Sounds like an amazing... Cat is the most popular answer, by the way. I would, because I think that is the probably the, the best yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not like when you're a dog, you don't really have to, like, obey. You know, like, dogs have to, they get told what to do quite a lot. Cats, they just, they, they like, treat you like staff, you know? We have a cat and it rules the roost. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. But I like shark as well. I like yeah, I think shark would be fun because you're not, like, I was going to say fish, but I think I'd be too scared as a fish because everything eats you as a fish. But if you were a shark... I guess you don't have that threat and you've got loads of teeth, which I guess would be fun. And you get to live under the ocean. There you go. So that would be my, that would be my <laughs> And your last question, Jazzy, thank mm-hmm. you for your time today. Uh, where is your happy place? Oh, on the beach. On the beach? Any particular yeah. place that comes to mind? Yeah, Mount Monganui Main Beach in New Zealand, where I'm from. That is my happiest place on earth. That sounds like an amazing And place. if I could teleport myself there every day, I would but it's an awfully long way away. You will love travelling the country with this show. Remind us of what this show is again, please. David. Come what may, the musical movie spectacular. Beautiful. I added that I added that last bit. That's not really in the title, but I, I feel like it's it's good. It's spectacular, spectacular. Is <laughs> that spectacular, spectacular. Exactly. Uh, thank you so much. I hope it goes well for you on the show. I'm going to come and see you in Bath along with my wife, who's also wonderful. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to watch it. Oh, well, I can't wait to meet you both. It's lovely, lovely to have met you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye.